expertise, and I'm Angela, and I'm here today with Richard Rouse. He is the creative director, designer, writer at Paranoid Productions, whose most recent title is the action infiltration narrative game, The Church in the Darkness. He also wrote the popular book, Game Design Theory and Practice. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So how did you get started in game development? Well, uh, I really wanted to do it since I was pretty young. I think since I first like saw a coin-op arcade game, and in uh, seventh grade, so that would have mm-hmm. been like you know, I was twelve or something like that. Uh, I, my best friend, uh, his father was a computer science guy, and uh, he helped me learn how to program the first games. And I made we made a bunch of like text adventures and uh, adventure games and stuff in high school, and then I. In college, really wanted to do it. I was going to school in Chicago and applied to intern at a really tiny company at the time, mm-hmm. which eventually grew to be Bungie Software. I oh, yeah. So I knew them when they were just two people in their apartment. Yeah. And then uh, they you know, gave me an opportunity on some stuff, and I, I got in. Cool. So what would be your major influences in, uh, in game development? Oh, interesting. Um, you know, I really like a lot of different aspects of game design like growing up definitely text adventures were a big thing like the Infocom mm-hmm. games from way back then um, like Planetfall or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, you know, Trinity um, and those were you know interesting because they just sort of take took video games seriously in a mm-hmm. way that other games didn't at the time and I liked action games too like I liked the original Mario Brothers I played that a lot like the one where it's just the one screen um, and or games like Karataka uh, which is mm. the game George Mechner did before Prince of Persia. Right. Like that was a big one. And then also RPGs. I really liked um, the Bard's Tale series, the original one. It's made by Michael Cranford. Um, and what's cool is I've, as you get in the game industry, if you're lucky, you can meet the people who made those things mm-hmm. eventually. So I've met like George Mechner, and he was in my book, and I've met Michael Cranford at GDC a couple mm. of years ago. And I got uh, two of the Infocom guys, Steve Moretzky and Brian Moriarty, both did a lot of writing for the game I just did. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so those folks are inspiring. There's tons of others, like Sid Meier and Will Wrights and stuff like that. Right. But I don't really make games like them. Yeah. But I'm just inspired by how they look at the medium as sort of a place for the player to be creative and solve things in unique ways. So So can you describe The Church in the Darkness for someone who's never seen it? Sure, yeah. The Church in the Darkness is a, uh, you know, like you said, you're infiltrating a cult, so it's sort of a stealth game, but sort of plays differently than most stealth games. It's a little fast, it's open world, so there's more variety of solutions you can do. It's not like insta-fail, but it's also permadeath. So <laughs> it's it's got some roguelike elements wow, to it. Okay. But you're able to recover, but some people do find it hard. Some people find it easy. It's a big range. Mm-hmm. Got a bunch of difficulty levels in the game. Anyway, so there's that side of it is the gameplay. Uh, and it's from a top-down angle, which yeah. makes it a little different, too. But um, you're infiltrating this religious cult in the 1970s where your nephew has joined. You don't know if he's safe or not. And you hear all the narrative through, like, PA messages from the cult leaders talking to you all the time. You've got full voiceover for everything. And then... Uh, what you don't know is, are the cult leaders sincere in their beliefs, or are they really dangerous and apocalyptic and something bad? And you're trying to figure that out while you play, and part of the roguelikiness of it is that we change the narrative, too. So sometimes they are really dangerous, and sometimes they're not, so it's like a mystery where what you think you should do each time changes. So hopefully it's replayable, and you can see like a ton of different endings you can get. It's all very simulation-y. What you choose to do affects the story in a lot of different oh, yeah. ways. So. That's interesting. What phase of development are you in? So we just shipped in oh, August. That's nice. Yeah, pretty recently. We're still, I would say we're still in support mode. Mm-hmm. If we, there was a phase. Uh, so something people shouldn't forget is in the modern day, you know, even if you're not, obviously, like in mobile or whatever, those are live service games that go on forever, yeah. ideally. Uh, but even if you're shipping a Steam game like mine, like I say it's a Steam game, but it actually came out on PS4, Xbox, Switch let's say a PC slash console game, even if you're shipping yeah. a narrative single player one, mm-hmm. you're not seeing it as like a service. Mm-hmm. There's still a period after where you're going to want to update it, react to like yeah. control things. People have had feedback about something. People found little bugs, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we've been doing that for the last couple of months and we're sort of still cool. still going on some yeah. old support. So That's cool. So what's, uh, what's something you wish you'd known about game development before you began? All long yeah. ago. It was long ago. <laughs> it was long ago. I mean, I guess... I, I spent a long time trying to figure out how you make games 
like in a studio, like mm -hmm. where there was a team and like, what's the process and how do you, you know, write a design document and, you know, who, who has which job on the team and stuff like that. And I came, you know, from what I would read in magazines or whatever back mm -hmm. then, pre, pre internet, uh, I would come to conclusions about these things. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know is it's really different in different studios. So you might find in one studio, they write a GDD like this. And in another yeah. studio, it's totally different. They don't even have a GDD. They have a thing, on, they have a wiki, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, someone who has one title in one studio might do a different job yeah. in a different studio, right? And it's, it isn't as structured and formalized as like filmmaking is. So I'm sure film mm -hmm. sets are different too. It feels like there's more of an accepted screenplay yeah. format at right. least and these gdds don't have an accepted format yeah. right so i wish i'd known that i i was searching for something that didn't exist <laughs> right the answer yeah, to that it's true. uh so you know that's that's the thing that pops to mind uh how do you cope with stress or obstacles in uh, in your work when something's just not working yeah go to bed <laughs> particularly if it's late i mean yeah. i so often you get stuck. So I just did a lot of programming on the last game. Mm -hmm. Historically, I've done design and writing. And yeah. I've just found that there's different times a day. I'm better at different things mm -hmm. sometimes. And it's different for different people. Like some people, and I used to be more of a night owl. Now I'm more of a wake up at five, mm -hmm. do and some work, work before anyone day, wakes up, yeah. and then do some work during the day as well. Mm -hmm. But then like, you know, less work after seven or right. something like that, right? And just sort of knowing what your thing is. And obviously, if you're working collaboratively, you've got to do what the needs are. But when it comes to your own work, find the time that you're best at it. And if you're really stuck, just do something else. Come mm -hmm. back to it the next day. Your brain will work on it while you're sleeping, hopefully. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it'll come like so many bugs. You just spend an hour on them. And then the next morning, it's like, oh, it's this. And then, yep. poof. There you go. So. All right. Favorite aspect of making games? I really like when you've sort of got enough in to really show it to players for the mm -hmm. first time and they get it mm -hmm. or they get something about it, right? It's not, it's often not exactly what you thought yeah. they would like about it, but seeing that first reaction of like, oh, it all came together because there's so many parts, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of art and design, programming, audio, you know, just getting the thing to run well uh, is, is, takes a long time and it can be frustrating because often, you know, somebody who's just a regular gamer or a member of the public, you know, they won't want to see the broken version. They want something that feels done. So once you've got enough of it, usually not the whole game, but mm -hmm. like a small chunk, you can show them and you see, oh, I like what they like this part. They don't like this part. And then you can go back and iterate on it. It's more of that time when players finally play it is when it finally feels worth it, I guess. Mm -hmm. you have a least favorite? Something that frustrates you? Yeah, I mean, hmm. there's definitely, I mean, a bunch of them. <laughs> But there's sometimes, particularly in big studios, mm -hmm. when people aren't fully aligned on what you're making or yeah. people don't agree, and you're in an early stage where it's like mostly paper mm -hmm. and stuff or you know, just having a lot of meetings, yeah. it just feels like sometimes, can we just make a thing and then change that if it's mm -hmm. not working? But instead of, because there can be sometimes like an analysis paralysis sort of yeah. thing where you just spend too long not making a thing. It would be better if you just made a thing even if it didn't work out. Like exactly. instead of endlessly talking about it, yeah. some I and I've I would never be accused of underthinking things. Though it's not like I'm saying don't have meetings, don't have discussions, don't document things well. It's just like at some point you got to make a thing. Exactly. Get to that as soon as you yeah. can responsibly. So, do you have any advice for people starting out in uh, game? Yeah, um, it's you know you hear a lot of stories mm -hmm. online, wherever you know, on social media, in articles, in interviews about you know how it is to work in the industry and i think mm -hmm. it's like the process thing i talked about is it can be really different and you can hear a lot of horror stories about overwork and you know, yeah. sexist behavior or about you know uh toxic environments in different ways mm -hmm. and they're not all like that some are like that and the yeah. trick is getting in to the good ones, mm -hmm. right? Figuring out what those are, which can be tricky. Finding the good ones. Right, yeah, because yeah. there can be, it cannot be obvious from the outside. They might yeah. make it, they might love the game they make. The game might be amazing, but everyone making it is having a hard time for one reason or another, yeah. right? So sometimes, and I've known a bunch of people who've gone to like, I always wanted to work here, and then you get there and it's like, oh, oh this that's is what not, I really like, eh? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, they make this thing I love, but I'm not going to love working there. So it'd be better even if I was working in something I love a little less. Obviously, you want to work what you're working on. You want to love that game, but it doesn't, 
you've got to find a place that's the right fit yeah. for you too. And some exactly. people, you know, might like working in that environment. Mm. You might not. Um, so it's just, I hope sometimes when the horror stories get out, that people don't assume it's all like that because there are lots of places that emphasize work-life balance. People mm -hmm. have families, people have yeah. sports, they go do whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They feel more balanced. Then there are some places less so. Yeah. <laughs> so. so what's up next for you in Paranoid Productions? Yeah, but we're still supporting the games. We mm -hmm. just shipped it, doing the updates I talked about. Yeah. Um, and we're uh, looking at new stuff, but it's mm -hmm. pretty early days. So, mm -hmm. you know, today here at the Montreal Game Summit, yeah. I'm, I'm doing the closing talk later mm -hmm. today uh, with a bunch of other people. Um, and I'll, you know, I've got a co talk coming up at GDC that I do every year and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I'm, those are the things I can talk Keep about busy. that I'm doing. But, <laughs> yep. you know, in terms of the game, it's sort of very early days uh, mm -hmm. while we're finishing up stuff on the other one. What's the next thing going to be? I couldn't tell you because I don't know myself. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, how can people get uh, get more information about you and your and your studio? Sure. Well, if you want to see more about the game, it's very Googleable. The Church mm -hmm. in the Darkness. Yep. Uh, that'll come up nicely. The Steam page will come up or our website will come up. Mm -hmm. That has links to where you can get it on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, or Steam, or GOG, or Humble, or uh, Itch. Or, you know, it's, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to just check me out on social media where I post about talks and stuff, uh, I'm Richard Rouse III for Richard Rouse III, but just written out, mm -hmm. uh, with no faces or characters or anything. <laughs> and uh, that's probably the best place to find me. Um, you can also, on that same website, if you go mm -hmm. to paranoidproductions.com, it's got all my old talks and stuff, yeah. and links to my book if you want to check that out and stuff. That's awesome. So, awesome. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Everyday Expertise. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to share this video with friends and colleagues who may also enjoy this topic. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below or check the description for our social media. See you next time.